It's uh, Aston Villa there right now. They're going well it's, uh, at the moment, aren't they? Big Ron has won the cup twice, of course, as a manager. His assistant, Andy Gray, has won at Wembley as well. Can they steer Villa to the final in their first season together? Swindon provided the opposition on Sunday. Duncan Shearer would need some looking after. He had 20 goals to his credit going into the match. Dwight York. Well, he could claim at least a goal in each of the previous two rounds. Match commentator at the county ground, Jonathan Pearce. Swindon Town, Glenn Hoddle graced the FA Cup final twice at the turn of the 80s with Tottenham Hotspur, bearing his hallmark of crisp passing skills and unchanged and at full strength in front of this 16,000 sellout crowd. Ross McLaren, their sweeper, passed fit after a stomach strain kept him out of the team's build-up at Henlow Grange near Hitchin. Swindon will use him to start things moving from the back with Mickey Hazard joining in their sweeping passing movements and Martin Ling buzzing in the hole behind strikers David Mitchell and Duncan Shearer in order to cleave Aston Villa out of this competition. Villa themselves welcome back Darius Kubitski, the Polish international, dropped from last Saturday's defeat at Wimbledon. Also back in their starting lineup, Dwight York, the Tobagan striker, whose strike knocked out Holder Spurs in round three and whose hat trick disposed of Derby in round four. Villa's only goals in their last eight games coming in the cup. The referee, Ray Lewis from Great Bookham in Surrey. Swindon in the red then kicking from right to left in this first half of this FA Cup fifth round. They have not been past this stage since 1970. Immediately looking for Kerslake on the far side was Tom Jones. Mitchell showing early aggression on that far side. Here's Kevin Richardson, the Villa skipper. David Kerslake. Shearer, lovely flick, chance here for Ling. Can Kubitsky cut him off, Ling? He's got Shearer peeling away in the middle. Driven wide, good fullback play by Kubitsky. Made the forward think, made him make the decision. Here's Kerslake, still on his feet, Kubitsky. Good run by David Kerslake. He's got Jones in space, just over. Good early move that by Swindon Town. Kerslake bursting between the defenders, the former Queen's Park Rangers. Winger turned fullback, David Kerslake. Nips in intelligent pullback and Jones stretching leaning back but nearly first blood to Swindon Kubitsky slightly too short for Dwight York Richardson can pick up the loose pieces the wind swirling the cold biting and flesh numbing for the fans York Froggart Steve Froggart from Lincoln actually made his debut uh, against Sheffield United as a substitute Kevin Richardson and Steve Staunton rather with a long throw good header away by Calderwood Teal. Oh, it bobbled just as he went to uh, float in the Gary Owen as the Grand Slam approaches for England. To use a, a rugby phrase, a high up and under. Again, Swindon playing it out from the back. Bowed in. This time Mitchell's got away. Took it well as well, Dave Mitchell. Only Seely to beat Mitchell. Seely blocks. Good stop by the goalkeeper. Again, the chance for Swindon. <laughs> Jones. Tommy Jones this time trying his luck. It was Ling and Seeley at the second attempt. Armin Ling. Earlier on in the season, Mickey Hazard was playing slightly further forward than he is now for Swindon. And Martin Ling has taken that role now. Been around a long time, it seems. He's only 25, Martin Ling. 
around in the lower reaches. And Sealy, furious with his defence for allowing the shot from Tommy Jones. Just the touch that Kerslake needed to get it to McLaren. And has it. McLaren breaks forward. Bodin has Jones available. Paul Bodin. Mitchell as he got past the offside chart, but he's been driven well wide. McGrath cutting down the angle. Jones is back up the line. Ling is in the middle. And arriving now is Mickey Hazard. Blocked by Teal. It's clipped in by Ling and Seeley gathers it. Again, Swindon Town putting Aston Villa under pressure. Martin Ling's a little bent shot at the end. Mitchell had made the early running. Dragging McGrath out of the middle. Hazard was a stinger. And Ling, a delicate chip at the end. Les Seeley. Had anyone followed through, Villa might have been under more pressure than they were. Kavitsky inside Bodin. Oh. Oh, you can feel the shudders from up here then as Mitchell went up with Teal and Ling on the run. Still Martin Ling. Ling, he's got Shearer away to his right-hand side behind Staunton. Can he keep it in because Mitchell's back in the middle? And fist low. Villa once more. Slightly perturbed at the back. A fizzer from Duncan Shearer. No one there there to touch it in, but still they come forward. Daly was uh, just uh, lost his feet then as he went for the return. York switches to the other side. Staunton. Frog it out on the left-hand touchline. Regis making a diagonal burst in the run. Good run this by Cyril Regis. Hammond comes out. Saw it well and early did Nicky Hammond. But an intelligent run by Cyril Regis. Let's have a look at the Swindon chance again. Shearer fizzed it low. Just too far for Les Seeley. Parker spots Staunton. Dwight York. Harry Parker. York again, onto his right foot, Dwight York, and Villa take the lead! Dwight York allowed to come and gets his fifth goal in the FA Cup competition. York scores for Aston Villa, allowed to come all the way. Cuts inside, Nicky Hammond's view of it, obscured at the back perhaps by Colin Calderwood. But the question mark that Glenn Hoddle will be putting on his defence, why did he let him come so far? The Villa build-up had been patient, and Glenn Hoddle looks slightly perplexed. McGrath just took it away from Shearer. Sean Taylor now. Hazard coming close, wanting it. And hungry for the ball, Mickey Hazard. And that's the half-time whistle. And Swindon, who made the early running from the second division and had the best chance when Dave Mitchell was foiled by Les Seeley's diving save and also saw efforts from Jones and Hazard go close. Go in at half-time by a goal to nil. Dwight York's fifth in the FA Cup competition this season gives the first division side the half-time lead. the end product Tommy Jones Bowden Mitchell and Shearer on the edge of the box it comes to Dave Mitchell oh, nearly put it through Paul McGrath's legs and inside that box is Martin Link now here's David Kerslake past Staunton second good run of the game in the middle Shearer just wide Duncan Shearer and anxiety at the back for Aston Villa again as Duncan Shearer Comes within a whisker of his 29th of the season. Again, it was Kerslake doing the hard work, as he did in the first half, when he pulled it back and Swindon went close in the first period. Shearer got his touch. Not too far away for Duncan Shearer. Not a good final ball. And Swindon first to it at the moment. 
It's certainly not a question of Villa sitting on their lead, but at the uh, present time, Swindon, the hungrier for it. As they chase the game, this would be the inevitable pattern. Here's McLaren. Tommy Jones. Good ball. That one wasn't such a good one. Here's uh, Kevin Richardson. Gave Froggart too much to do, did he know? Froggart away to Dwight York. York, Taylor the only man back, reaches away towards the right-hand side. York, will he need him? York, he goes alone, and he stumbled. Now Gary Parker, still the pressure on. Froggart from away, oh yes! That's a screamer by Stephen Froggart. Steve Froggart gets his first goal for Aston Villa. Ron Atkinson on his feet applauds. And Nicky Hammond has the forlorn job of picking the ball out of the net. What a cracking goal by the teenager after the original chance seemed to have gone. Once more picking his spot cleanly and driving it in after Dwight York had muffed the original opportunity. Ooh, he hit that crisply. Aston Villa at 2-0 up. The fans in the north stand on their feet. There's Lake and shown poise on the ball. Duncan Shearer for Nicky Hazard Bowden's away down the left if he can find him good ball Bowden driving on Mitchell pulls one back for Swindon Town a move that exemplifies Swindon Town's crisp passing movements and that would have pleased the old maestro himself Dave Mitchell pulls one back then and Swindon still have a quarter of an hour what a lovely move Bowden in it is at the start and Mitchell sliding home for his fourth of the season good early delivery in by Paul Bowden and David Mitchell sliding home to atone for that earlier miss they're playing out time Aston Villa they're playing key ball possession football and why not Calm and unruffled, and uh, sometimes intense wind and pressure, and Aston Villa go through to the FA Cup quarter-finals. Swindon, for all their exquisite patterns painted in midfield, know the bitter feeling of defeat in an FA Cup fifth-round tie, and the exquisite feeling that only the FA Cup can give victors is felt by Aston Villa, who took their chances crisply and cleanly, and Swindon perhaps now regret the ones they missed in the first half. Swindon Town 1, Aston Villa 2, the first division side through to the last eight. Through to the quarterfinals, Peter Osgood and Alan Mullery with us in the studios. Well, you better pick up where you started, Alan, hammering Villa. <laughs> I, I mean, I don't think it's just a, an opinion, Richard, to be honest, I'm an amateur Villa. I thought they were outplayed for 95% of the game. They probably had three chances, scored twice, Swindon, over elaborate at times, as I said, at the beginning of the programme, um, but a far better side on the day than what Villa were, but mm. they got the result, Villa. I mean, Swindon, if they'd have scored their chances, you know, like everybody, you miss them, you score them, whatever. Uh, but they did it very well. David Kerslake got a lot of skill, had him at QPR, and he was a right winger. I mean, great ball come in. I mean, if that had been on target, um, Seely probably wouldn't have stood a chance, mm. you know, as far as that's concerned. I mean, it was a great build-up, lovely move. I mean, the boy Ian Mitchell looked, took it well, you know, beat the offside trap, gets forward, now Oz would have been there, he would have chipped it over the goalkeeper, but he tried to cipher it past the goalkeeper. That's two charges there in the first ten minutes. And Villa literally got broken down time and time again in that yes. spot. Um, but they won the game, and that's all there is to it. You see what Oz would have done, he would have been pleased enough with the two strikes that um, Villa won it with, Peter. Oh, absolutely, yeah. I think I, I agree with Alan. They play some super fo football, Swindon, but they play too much football for me. And when they play the, this, uh, well, this is a great goal from the, from the uh, York again. He takes on his chest, commits the defender in to dive in here, just toes it past him, has a look, picks his spot and hits it with the outside of his foot when it's on the, on the wrong side. And it's a great strike and great goal. He's chasing your record, scored in every round. Yes, I know. I think there was one uh, bit dubious at Tottenham you were talking about early on. This is a great strike, again, from a young player. Nice to see young players. You've got Froggart, Stewart, 
and uh, McManaman of Liverpool. I mean, super strike from the young lad here. You're, you're trying to take one off him, are you? The goal, <laughs> the goal at Tottenham. Well, I'd like to. He stood for a while, but uh, no, if, if, if it's genuine, he's scored in every round. It's quite a feat, actually, to score in every round, to go right through. But uh, they've got to get through the final first, but uh, hopefully they will, because I've tipped them. Yeah, but, but they are going well, aren't they? I mean, well, that, as Alan when, says, when you looked at that, that the, the draw for the fifth round, Aston Villa at Swindon, again, a lot of people fancied uh, Swindon to win that. Well, as Alan they? said, I think, Richard, uh, they, they're not playing well. They're yeah. really not playing well, and they're still getting results. And, and they were outplayed. I mean, and, as Aslan said, 95% of the, And if Swindon had taken the chances, they would have gone through, there's no doubt about it. I, th I think the thing about it, when you look at cup football, when you get sort of six games to get to Wembley, they're doing it the right way. They're mm. not playing particularly well and getting there. I think the question mark will come in the next round. You know, they're through. It's either Ipswich or Liverpool, and I think that's where they'll be tested. Well, that leads us rather nicely on to what was our live match on Sunday. We were very much looking forward to this one. In truth, it was somewhat spoilt by a horrible, blustery win, but there was still enough in it to make it enjoyable. Liverpool arrived courtesy of a replay win over Bristol Rovers. What a win, though, inspired by Steve McManaman. Mm. Ipswich against Liverpool, then our commentators at Portman Road, David Pleat and Martin Tyler. Stockwell, Kiwamia, turns Mark Wright, leads it. Oh, and it was Johnson. Ipswich certainly had enough players forward there. Inside the six-yard area after terrific play by Chris Kiwamia. Well, Gavin Johnson had a wonderful chance there to make his early mark on this game. Johnson. It's dropped over Nicol for Giselle. Witten's cross. Kiwanya coming in. It bounced over him. It'll drop there for Johnson. Kiwanya didn't connect with any sort of power at all as Liverpool were opened up, not for the first time. The ball started from that left ball to right. Sweeping crossfield ball. Hit in early then by uh, Steve Witten. And then there's all sorts of problems in the goal mouth. Saunders is away though for Liverpool. Can he finish with more authority? Can't. Well, we could have had the score of either end. This was ball that bounced over Kiwamia. Cut back intelligently by Johnson. And Kiwamia swinging at it. Not an easy ball to strike. Thompson. to his play and that was a strong run we've seen his ability to get into the penalty area and to dead passes as well it's quite a dividend character but he's beginning to feel more confident out there on the pitch and Liverpool from this corner all marking spaces second one safely behind for the corner and Ipswich will try not to think to put the ball in a similar area and once more he pulled to the test they're starting to get these corners his reaction. Oh, and right. The ball is in the net, but the goal isn't going to stand. Now Butch indicating that he'd seen a push 
what would have been Mark Wright's first in Liverpool's colours. Well, he'll have to wait. That was fascinating to watch the goalkeeper there as he tried to get amongst the two Liverpool players with many, many rush and decided he couldn't get for it. Uh, slightly fortunate and I'm sure the decision was absolutely correct, but uh, Hall was stranded. Forrest was stranded, sorry. Walk in difficulties here as Saunders came careering through and Forrest and Walk got closer and closer and nearly crashed into each other. That would have delighted Saunders if it had happened. I think it's Ray Houghton against his own post. And they've been working on it in training all week. Nice when something like that comes off, Alan, isn't it? <laughs> well, it was the only way he could get it back to him, to be honest. Play it off the post, <laughs> straight into his hands. And Bruce had to be five yards outside the goal to collect it, you see. That's the replay, right. incidentally, is live on Sky Sports next Wednesday, week Wednesday. Uh, Ipswich. I think it'll be a far or? better game, to be honest, uh, at Anfield. I think because, again, the wind was a, a factor in it. And I think Liverpool really knew how good uh, you know, Ipswich were because Ipswich had a hell of a good run uh, you know, under John Lyle, who's, who's done an excellent job there. He's got a young side and they're playing very well. But I think it would be a better game at Anfield. They had the best chances, Peter, and they looked good in midfield as well. They're a very good side, there's no doubt about it. Obviously, their priority is, is going up to the first division, but they've really stretched Liverpool. And I think the wins kept Liverpool in because John Walk, you can see him just stretching for the header, which he's hit the bar with. And uh, it was a great header, but uh, unfortunately, just off balance a little mm. bit. And uh, they certainly, they, they, they had four, four really good chances there, and they should have beat Liverpool. We've said it once or twice. If ever there's been a season in recent memory when you would perhaps tip against Liverpool. It's, it's this season, isn't it? They don't give me any confidence, to be fair, uh, watching them. I mean, Graham Souness, probably watching this programme tonight, will send me down a poison pen letter. Um, but I, I, I don't give me any confidence at all. I think they've struggled, they struggled against Bristol Rovers in both the games. They didn't win the game well, you know, they didn't win the game well at Anfield, and they struggled down there at Prenton Park. Um, and I think they've struggled there, there on, on, uh, against Ipswich. Mm. And I don't think it's going to be easy for them when they play the replay. Surprise, perhaps, it's live. Week Wednesday here on Sky Sports. Talking of the live football, England B against France B. Live tomorrow night. Join us for that and for Bolton against Southampton after the break. Now to the comeback of the weekend. Bolton Wanderers, four times winners of the Cup against Southampton, who won it, of course, back in 1976. Could Bolton do to Southampton what they'd done at Old Trafford to Manchester United? Remember that dramatic penalty shootout? We saw it live here on Sky Sports. Oh, well, Ryan Giggs missing. Tim Flowers setting a new personal best for 200 metres. <laughs> Nobody could catch him. To Burnham Park then, 20,000 inside to cheer Phil Neal's third division outfit on. Commentator is Paul Dempsey. Once upon a time, days such as this were a commonplace at Burnham Park, the home of Bolton Wanderers, four times winners of the FA Cup. They haven't been further than the fifth round since 1959. Today the town of Bolton has come in expectation of a piece of FA Cup history from the only team from the lower divisions left in the competition at this stage. Certainly Bolton's boss Phil Neal has achieved his first ambition of the day, a packed Burnham Park for what he says will be the first time in his six years in charge as manager. They've been quietly achieving in the lower divisions for quite a few years, Bolton, perennially in the pro promotion race and with a couple of trips to Wembley for the variously named FR Freight Rover Trophy and Sherpa Van Trophy finals. But this is a big day in every sense, just about as big as the club has had in its recent past. 
Neil hasn't gambled on the fitness of his club skipper Phil Brown who's been fighting back from hamstring trouble a settled squad has been boosted by the arrival from Celtic of Andy Walker five goals in six starts and looking good value at 160,000 pounds a mixture of battle hardened and streetwise pros with a few youngsters who've been proving themselves in a hard school the worst league record in Division 1 Southampton but arguably the best cup side only five league victories but nine wins in 14 cup ties this season six of them against first division opposition Ian Brantford says we'd sweep both cup runs aside for 15 league points the cup form has kept an otherwise depressing season bubbling along Terry Harlock is suspended but the Saints have had a few free days to regroup and plan for this one come armed with the dual strike force of Matt Letizia and Alan Shearer two of the brightest young attacking talents in the country now knocking hard on England's door in this international week referee Michael Peck from Kendall in Cumbria gets us underway and Bolton going from right to left Southampton in their chain strip blue and white and plenty of time for a first touch for Richard Hall who goes back to Tim Flowers the hero of Southampton's cup victory this is the schoolmaster from Kendall in Cumbria Michael Peck a biting wind off the Lancashire Hills and it's all set up here for what should be a real test of character in football terms David Burke was quite happy to concede a corner in the first moments of the game Burke one of several Bolton players who've been around the league scene there's no shortage of experience and they'll relish this job today great noise being generated by Bolton support Adams corner it's a good one David Felgate staying on his line referee lets it go and uh, as Julian Darby tried to break out Neil Ruddock prevented him duly and at the least is going to get a severe talking to and it may be worse for Neil Ruddock who collects yellow cards just about like nobody in the pro game here it is a clear illegal block and Ali again gives the ball away again a good ball forward from Kelly and again Brown can run at Benali Brown keeps it alive men over here offside no offside referee lets it go Southampton players furious and it was perhaps an even better chance than it looked first time Julian Darby here it comes Michael Brown and a good whip cross in and Darby left all alone every Southampton defender had stopped and the referee signaled no offside Phyllis Kirk down for Darby good ball Walker very aware and again just creating a half a yard for himself Brown and Benali again in one of the good individual battles going on around the pitch Benali gets the better of that one and he's having a tough old time of it Francis Benali to keep Michael Brown quiet Spooner and Brown that's Brown Walker offside this time against Phyllis Kirk and after their previous lap Southampton will probably be feeling a lot more confident about their own offside trap after this one ball whipped in again by Brown one touch from Walker all the hands have gone up Saints defenders all stopping again and this time they got the benefit of the referee's decision corner a little untidy for Bolton Seagraves really just losing it it seemed in the wind which is sweeping down off the hills behind the ground and it's giving Flowers tremendous length with his kicking Letizia keeper stayed on his line chance here goal on the far side and it's Richard Hall Bolton's good work in the first 
half an hour or so undone by a couple of moments of defensive sloppiness. Letizia firing it at the back post, Hall unmarked, and that is what Southampton were looking for. Just one small mistake. The player on the line, Brown, and as Felgate dived across, neither of them could stop the header from Richard Hall. And now Bolton have it all to do. Having played with such composure through the first quarter of the match and certainly matched everything that Southampton were able to produce. Just a little untidy at the back for a moment and now they're in arrears. Foul by Burke. Patterson might be something here Walker and Phyllis Kirk combining well again and back come Bolton <laughs> Kelly's corner a good one it's an excellent clearing header by Gray Shearer finds Letizia, excellent ball out under pressure. Now Horn. Benali breaking two. Quality break by Southampton. Can they produce a strike on goal on the end of it? Kennett arrives. They're all lining up for it. And uh, Kenner can't find anybody in blue. Good ball out for Bolton by Brown David Lee chance to run at Burke and uh, gets a corner so Burke also having his hands full to deal with a wide threat for Bolton and Lee who was in the action much sooner than expected than he could have expected settling to a full day's work almost very well Letizia more danger here same routine same result Bolton haven't learned the lesson a carbon copy goal from Richard Hall and two in two minutes are turning what looked a very tough afternoon for Southampton into a pretty straightforward one. Here's the second. No variation, exactly the same routine. And Bolton can't keep that one out either. Brown, not offside. Chance to run. He's got in behind Benali. Benali gets back. Benali eventually does well to get a clearing foot in the way. Horn leads the charge out, helped by Gray on his left. Well-timed ball. Southampton flooding men forward. Letizia and Shearer waiting. Could Gray go on his own? Good save by Felgate, who grabs it safely. Well, Stuart Gray, who got a gifted goal at Old Trafford in the round four, had to work a lot harder for that chance. Once more Hall and Ruddock join Letizia and Shearer on the edge of the box. Aimed at Shearer, good knock two, is trouble here. Ruddock couldn't do it, back up the post and in for number three. Most unfortunate, but that's the kind of day it's turning out to be, except that Bolton for once get a little good fortune. It looked for a moment like an own goal for Mark Seagraves. Here it comes, Shearer's first header, again Southampton players free unmarked on the far post. Lee whips it back in. It ends in the net of Seagraves. But offside, and it was marginal. Well cleared by Ruddock. Now Kelly. Derby. No. Yes, there was a foul. 
for an instant. The crowd were hoping perhaps that the referee was going to let it go on in Bolton's advantage, but they did call them back. And now Saints have the advantage themselves and that they can pull one, two, three, four, five men into a wall. Cockrell on one side of it, Shearer on the other. Young Michael Brown slips into it between them. For Bolton, Kelly goes for goals, a good effort. It was an excellent effort. And an excellent stop from Tim Flowers. Lovely strike from a dead ball by Kelly. Again, a good header. It's Hall again, Shearer, now can he turn off, yes indeed he can, and it's one on one here for just a second, Shearer, good try, excellent try, Felgate got his body positioning absolutely right, here it comes again, Shearer happy to drift away from goal and then produce that whipped drive, and he's proving a real handful for it. Mark Kame and Mark Seagraves. Ruddock fouled by Andy Walker. And Ruddock is another of those Southampton players who's well ahead on points in his own individual duel this afternoon Ruddick looks for Shearer who gets there beautifully Letizia more danger went near post Matt Letizia and as Bolton try to break out fast they're frustrated here's the knockdown by Shearer first of all and Letizia Everything was right about that. Burke for Bolton, who still huff and puff, but they're not really able to create much danger. Maybe Kelly can here. Good run by Kelly. And just for a second, a way to goal opened up. And when it did, David Kelly, Tony Kelly couldn't produce a finish to match his excellent run skipping past Ruddock ball bubbling Kelly unable to hit the target now Green with a first chance to stretch his legs Phyllis Kirk good ball Walker no offside and Bolton are alive and Andy Walker has come to life to keep a phenomenal record of goal scoring since his arrival from Celtic intact here it comes again they haven't very often tried to play offside in this match but Southampton have been caught twice in this game here's the second occasion the new man Green the fresh legs creating a little danger turning the defence Walker right on hand every Southampton back four player had stopped and Andy Walker gives Bolton hope Ruddick missed it, Walker, he's really come to life, still dangerous, goal kick, again a clever pass from Kelly who is capable of producing just something a little different for Bolton, and Walker having scored his left foot didn't quite make a, as good a connection there Kelly wins it Benali forward to Letizia Bolton have pushed way forward and still there are men offside and that's why Horn held it up and did very well to do so was Lee offside? No but just overruns him and Burke can get it back to Felgate and you know what he's going to do 
Reddick first, very strong, holding his ground against Walker. Gray, rather given away. And Kelly, the ball again, Walker. Didn't intend that, but stays with Bolton. Spooner and Kelly, again a good pass. Good ball for Reeves. Magnificent equaliser. The magic of the FA Cup, you never really know. And it's the second substitution which has done the trick. Scott Green, listen to the noise at Vernon Park. A far post ball of quality from one substitute to the other has done the trick. Reeves drilling it at the far post and Green, given a sniff of goal, has done it. And a tremendous comeback from Bolton. Well, full marks to Mick Brown and Phil Neal. They set out their soul apparently to give Southampton as many problems as possible. And as it finishes, a thrilling comeback achieved by Bolton Wanderers and they earn a money-spinning replay at the Dell on February the 26th. Southampton, the team that can do no right in the league, apparently were still on course to keep on doing right in the Cups. Richard Hall with two goals to give them a comfortable cushion at half-time. But Bolton, who'd started brightly and then faded, were brought to life by two substitutions from Phil Neal. Scott Green, the second of those to go on, producing the equaliser after Andy Walker had sparked to life to bring Bolton back into it. It turned into a thrilling finale and Bolton have been a credit to their division. Southampton presumably will be disappointed with the lapses which gave Bolton hope, but they too stay alive in the FA Cup. Well, Peter, Southampton do like giving away those two goal leads, don't they? We they saw them live against Manchester United, of course. They certainly keep us on our toes, Richard. Yes, after going two up, yes, I think it was bad marking uh, from Southampton and, and they've seriously let them back in the game, yes. So they, should have, they should have gone on and strolled it after that. Well, we'll have a look at the Bolton goals in a moment, but first of all, Alan, two extraordinary goals from Southampton, from, from mean, Bolton's point of view. Terrible uh, marking, bad defender. I mean, the, the, the lad Brown on the line, I mean, this is, I mean, nobody's picking up the lad Hall when he comes in from nowhere to head the ball. But the lad stand on the line, Brown, I mean, what he's trying to do, he's a contortionist, I think, by the look of him. Um, I mean, instead of sort of getting his chest in the way and this getting the, the ball off the one. line. This is not a replay. This, this is the second, second yes. Well, it, it could be a replay, but it's the second one. He does a, instead of heading it, he puts his head out the way and it goes in the net again. I mean, as a defender, he's like Saul Smith is to slimming, I suppose, really. Um, <laughs> awful. I mean, terrible defending. And both sides are, are exactly the same. I mean, Neil Reddick appealed twice for two offsides, stuck his hand up and walked out when they were defending. Well, if let's give those to Peter. Problem. Let's have a look at the other goals, the, uh, the two Bolton goals. Is he yours, Peter? Yes, uh, here he goes. He, he knocks it across in here. You see Ruddock moving up, as Alan says, and, and the fellow's just drifted in. I mean, the guy's playing him on behind him, you see. I mean, Ruddock shouldn't be playing the offside. The, the fullback should be playing the offside behind him, giving him a shell. He just steps up, being lazy, really. And there's no need for it, because he could have picked the guy out easily. And Took the it next, nicely, Walker. Absolutely. The next one, exactly the same. You, you missed it there, but he's, he's walking up again, as Alan said earlier. He's walking up with his arm up to play offside. You'll see him here. Off he's gone and he's lost his man, lets him get his cross in, now he's coming to act to defend and the fella gets a great header in, super cross. Good cross, good header, but it was really made by Kelly who slipped a lovely little ball in, hasn't it? First time ball through and the guy's made a great run and just uh, knocked it up and uh, the guy's come in and finished off. Tremendous, I mean, they shouldn't have been in that position though, Southampton, just bad defending and really, being lazy really. Made it a good cup tie, didn't it? Very much so. As Paul yeah. said, the magic of the cup, you just never know. And that's been the case time and again this season you, so far. You would it? expect somebody like Southampton, yeah, to be a first division side at, at, at the present time they are. Um, <laughs> after winning, you know, leading 2-0. Um, and you'd expect them to have said to each other, hey, hold on, we know what it's like, you know, at this level. Let's hold it. Let's not make any silly mistakes and go through it next round. I saw Ian Bradford at the end there, smiling and laughing. I mean, I, I'd have given them the biggest, well, selling off of their lives. I mean, they've, they've had the, the game won, really, but they've got to go down and have another game at the Dell. Yeah, they've had the game won again, as was the case at Old Trafford. Absolutely. Got out of jail on the night with the penalty shootout, of course, but makes the replay interesting, doesn't it? Now then, goal highlights from Norwich against Notts County and Portsmouth Middlesbrough coming up. Here's Norwich. Chris Sutton with the opener. Simple enough, Alan, you'd have scored that. Oh, I like those, Richard. Those smashing ones from five yards with no keeper. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the second, Dave Phillips. It's 
strong run from the lad here and he just knocks under the keeper. And shades of Keith Houchin about this one. Phillips making progress down the right. Great, Great cross. cross. Yeah, super, uh, cross. super cross, yeah. Made it for the lad Sutton again, didn't he? I plead for David Stringer, actually. I'm glad they got the result. Portsmouth, Middlesbrough. Who are the cup side of the season, aren't they? Guy Whittingham. Yeah, simple goal. He's not been scoring many goals. I think he'd be delighted with that one. But uh, I think it was over the line anyway. But uh, bad defending again here. You see, look, three guys going for it. And the guy comes in and knocks in the last three minutes. Kerrigan. Yeah, mm. I'm lucky for Portsmouth there because they've got to go up to uh, Middlesbrough. Now it'll be a hard game. Well, here's the sixth round draw. Ipswich or Liverpool. Reminding you that that's live here on Sky Sports next week against Aston Villa. Uh, Portsmouth or Middlesbrough against Nottingham Forest. Chelsea against Sunderland or West Ham. Bolton or Southampton against Norwich. 11 to 4 joint favourites, Liverpool and Nottingham Forest. You can get 7 to 2 today, I notice, on Chelsea. If you had a couple of Bob Allen, where would it go? Oh, I'm still sticking to Nottingham Forest, Richard, to be fair. I fancy them, you know, really well after, after the, the draws they've had and things like this. And they haven't got, uh, it's not an easy draw for them in the next round, but they, 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 for me, they're the side at the moment that look as good as anybody in the FA Cup. Upset you probably, Peter. Phil Neal, incidentally, joins us tomorrow. He's a football, football show. It would be nice, in a way, to see Bol to, to see Bolton win that, wouldn't it, and, and get amongst the no. teams. No. <laughs> <laughs> Give us a little no. bit of magic and drama <laughs> in the quarterfinals, yeah. but you suspect that Southampton should win that now. I think they should go on and win it comfortably. I really do. And uh, the way they're playing, in all fairness to them, apart from them silly mistakes, they've had a great run. With, well, nine out of fourteen, I think it was. It was quoted. It's That's ridiculous, tremendous, isn't it? That's yeah. their cup form, isn't it? And yet in the league, a six first division size they've right. beaten. You know, it's it's incredible. It really is. I mean, if you look at the cup, if they did that in the league, they'd be sitting in the top six instead of a you know bottom of the That's table. That's got to be so frustrating, hasn't it, for Ian Bramford? Very what, frustrating. What do you do? Resign. <laughs> <laughs> But in order to get it going in the league? I, d I don't know how you change it from day to day. I, mean, I was reading a piece about uh, Peter Shreves today in, in the paper, you know, a crowd are calling for his head, and he doesn't understand why Tottenham have lost eight games at home this year. Mind you, I don't understand why the crowd are calling for his head. They've no, forgotten I, about I, the Cup, cup that. quarter final that's coming up and the Absolutely. run below Sam Amis. But it's extraordinary, isn't it? How do you motivate players to win a game one week and then lose a game the following week when players can play awful? That's, that's the enigma of being a football manager. I mm. think basically a lot of it, it comes down to the Cup, and you've got one chance at the Cup, and I think that <laughs> seems to make you pull a little bit extra. It shouldn't do, don't get me wrong, but it seems to. Oh, if we lose a game in the league, we've got another chance next week with the cup. It's a one-off job every year. Mm -hmm. And I think players, sometimes it gets them like that. Yeah. Sometimes players pick and choose their matches as well, if I <laughs> read between the lines of what Peter Shreves was saying today. Now then, football coming up on Sky Sports over the next few days. Liverpool, Ipswich, Wednesday the 26th. That's the fifth round replay. You can see it live here on Sky Sports. England B tomorrow night. There's something of a bonus. We saw the team that England had picked today and thought, must see that. So that's live uh, tomorrow night from Loftus Road. 7.30 we start, 7.45 kick-off. And live from Wembley on Wednesday, England against France. Also in that programme, extended highlights of the match between Scotland and Northern Ireland. One or two good matches coming up. Be very, very interesting, I think, the, uh, the big game on Wednesday. I mean, I think the big game would be interesting, but I think the, the England-France game... It's the second time, I think, in since Graham Taylor's been manager that we'll be tested. I know we've got a few injuries, but we still need to, to see how good we are. They haven't lost in three years or so, Peter? No, they've got a good, great record, and uh, obviously it's got uh, Shearer and Letizia uh, up his sleeve, hopefully. Hopefully we'll see some, some new blood in there, really. Mm. Well, just to reiterate.